When we talk about 8-bit today, we are probably thinking about a specific kind of style. 8-bit was born from video games that came out in the late 70s, early 80s, up to the mid-90s. The basis of true 8-bit is the same process that's used to create music for video games. I think 8-bit music makes for super fun building blocks of whatever you want to express. The cool thing about 8-bit is that it exists in that world, and bringing it back out it gives a whole new perspective on it. From 1977 to the launch of SNES in 1991, 8-bit is a throwback to the time when computers and video games had a distinct style. We are probably thinking of early Nintendo culture. But there was another 8-bit which was tied to the early home computers, which was more of a DIY culture. And so the idea of 8-bit culture today really is a combination of the graphical and visual style from the console games with this idea of the DIY culture as it came from the 8-bit home computer days. I think 8-bit really has three functions. One is that it's easy to make, so if you want to do a pixelated character, like almost everybody can do a character that's passable as 8-bit graphics. The second thing is that if you do 8-bit, you're sort of belonging to a specific group that you're rejecting something perhaps like big budget productions. Thirdly then, it also makes the creative process more like a game because you're creating these kind of artificial constraints on what you're doing as a creative person. Like the pixels being very large, limitations in terms of memory from a programming perspective, limitations in terms of sound. And so 8-bit is just the alternative option, right? That there always is a more kind of low-key or lo-fi way of creating the same thing. The interest in 8-bit now is not only in the technical limitations, but also there's a nostalgic factor. A lot of people grew up with it, and it kind of reminds them of a time when they would come home from school and start playing video games. For someone in my shoes, it's definitely a combination of both the nostalgia, but it's also about finding an artistic value in it that isn't nostalgic. The Dr. Horrible Project came about making the soundtrack in an 8-bit format, and they got a good deal of attention, and some of the cast members actually were talking about it on Twitter, so I said, okay, maybe I'm onto something. So I decided just to create an animation to go along with it. A lot of people talked about it, and it definitely helped the exposure. College Humor contacted me about doing Jersey Shore. Other ones I've done for College Humor were Man vs. Wild, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, Battlestar Galactica, Doctor Who, Saved by the Bell, and the uh, Mad Men one. And there's just such a broad age range of people that both watch these shows and have any kind of an interest in old video games. It is becoming its own respected art form, and some people use it just for fun, other people use it to create works of art. I love being able to communicate in a really simple way, and to me, pixel art is like the simplest way to communicate. You can throw up four colors, and it can mean something. It's able to whittle down complexity to its simplest form, and I lay every dot perfectly. The visuals and the music are always connected because we're using the same tools. Usually it's just done on the console like a Game Boy. I was really excited about making music with gear that sounded like my childhood. It's just frequencies moving at different rates. So there's a triangle, which is nice and bassy. It just moves in a way that rumbles a the speaker. There's a square wave, which is kind of harsh, but it has a wider range than the triangle. And the pulse wave is the tweeter. And then there's noise, which is awesome because you can make hi-hats and cymbals and explosions with that sort of stuff. It's kind of debatable, like if it should stay true to itself and become its own style. Or like me, I think that in order for me to grow as a musician, it needs to go beyond just sounding like video game music. Music. And I think, you know, like these things are just going to become instruments just like Casio keyboards are part of music. I think in Game Boy, it'll just be another tool that people can use. Experimentation will just keep going and just become part of music in general. Most of my nostalgia for 8-bit music is not the 8-bit music of the 80s. Any nostalgia that I have for 8-bit music is the 8-bit music I was making in high school with my friends. I didn't really grow up with these sounds, but I know where they're from. When we make music, we aren't trying to make technical demos of like what the Nintendo can do so much. I began approaching this in the middle ground of programming and music. It's funny to like take these cutesy, rough sounds and put them like in a venue where people are like crowd surfing. It's definitely an instrument. There are people that use like the ZX Spectrum, Amiga, NES, Game Boy, Atari ST, Atari ST, and I think every one of those except for the Game Boy predates my life. I think I prefer composing on a Game Boy or on a computer, and I prefer performing with a guitar. Now the only <laughs> time I play guitar is on stage. 
today, why would a child pick up a guitar and not a computer? Because on a computer, you can have a guitar and any other sound that you could possibly imagine. That said, there's a lot that like you miss with current technology stuff. Even like yeah. the difference between like using a laptop versus a drum machine. They all present different things. I think what's important is to get that they're on the same playing field. We're all just trying to like communicate. Music is a language. Programming is language. It's forcing a lot of the artists to almost become better and stronger because I'm gonna really push what I'm doing to like the next level. I think there's something really attractive about taking a digital image and making it analog. I had all these great video game ideas that I thought were just funny, but also had a real social commentary going on. One of the first ones that got really serious was JFK the game. Once I put it through this 8-bit filter, there's a whole new medium that gives it a whole new meaning. When I started getting these ideas, it kind of started snowballing into all these other things. And 9-11 is one of the most important things that have happened and changed our culture. So I wanted to put that through the filter and just to see what happened. The problem is, is that people associate video games with something cute and almost lighthearted. And people automatically just assume that you're making fun of something. And that's not necessarily the case. That juxtaposition is exactly what gave the piece its strength and its power. I saw the opportunity once I was making the video games to really push forward in a new genre. And I discovered that I have a real love for minimalism. I love stripping everything down and coming to the basis of the art and having just color fields, straight lines, hard edges, and making things that are very pleasing to the eye. You have people that might not be into art will just say, oh, I like that because it reminds me of the video games I used to play. There's definitely a nostalgia to it. We live in a digital world now, and this is kind of a byproduct of that. I think 8-bit will probably always be around as a kind of option. It's a very unique style born from limitation and it stood the test of time. Maybe in like 25 years, the Atari 2600 and all that will be so far away from our memory that it'll sound like the future. And it definitely makes you approach writing music very differently. There's a lot of like backwards thinking that's really refreshing. I think 8-bit is constantly growing and just like video games, it'll get better and better.